On today's episode, we're out here taking a look at the all new 2017 Buick LaCrosse. For 2017, the LaCrosse has become a little bit longer, a little bit closer to the ground. The roof line has actually dropped by nearly two inches. It's become a little bit wider, a little bit more powerful, an awful lot more fuel efficient, and definitely more comfortable on the inside. For 2017, the LaCrosse is also playing in a slightly smaller pool because the Hyundai Azera has been officially canceled for 2017, and we aren't really sure what the future of the Ford Taurus looks like. The Lincoln MKS, which was a sort of competitor to the Buick LaCrosse, has been canceled as well in favor of their brand new Lincoln Continental, which is definitely taking aim at Cadillac, not Buick. One of the big changes for the front end, of course, is this new grille, which looks to me to be a little bit smaller than the 2016 grille, but it is definitely angrier. We have a little bit more of an angle going on here. We have a larger Buick logo that's now in color, the red, white, and blue shields that we saw in the past from Buick. And we have this sort of chrome wing that wraps around the logo and extends to either side of the grille. The model we're driving today has front parking sensors that are very well integrated into the bumper. Then we also have fog lamps that are a little bit smaller and right down here at the bottom of the bumper. In terms of overall dimensions, this is now 197.5 inches long. That means this is still several inches shorter than the Chevy Impala, but this is just about the same size now as the Chrysler 300. One of the big changes for 2017 is that we have a wheelbase stretch, which is the distance between the front wheel and the rear wheel right back there of 2.7 inches. And that is quite a big stretch. By stretching the wheelbase out, they've improved the ride and given us a little bit more room inside the cabin. Now, right up front, we definitely have a front wheel drive proportion because of course the LaCrosse is available as a front wheel drive vehicle or as an all wheel drive vehicle. That means this is more similar to something like a Kia Cadenza or a Toyota Avalon in that respect and a little different than the Chrysler 300. Because even though the Chrysler 300 is about the same size as this vehicle, we have a little less room inside because it has a much longer hood in order to accommodate that V8 engine and the rear wheel drive layout. One of the other changes for 2017 is that the roof line has become a little bit swoopier, a little bit sexier, and it's now 1.7 inches closer to the ground. That means that we actually have less headroom right back here in the rear seat area than we had in 2016. Out back, we get a rear end that's a little bit less traditional than we've seen out of previous generation Buick LaCrosse models. The trunk lid also functions as sort of a spoiler. It actually comes up right there, sort of like a duck's tail. The Buick logo is very prominent on the trunk, and this also functions as the trunk release. We just press the logo in right there at the bottom, and that pops the trunk open. The tail lamp design wraps from the trunk lid on over to the body, and this reminds me an awful lot of the brand new Volvo S90. Just as with the Volvo S90, this particular tail lamp design isn't one of my favorites. So be sure and let me know what you think about it down there in the comments section below. We have well integrated parking sensors. Those parking sensors are standard back here in every Buick LaCrosse model. And we also have integrated exhaust tips built into the bumper. A major change under this hood is that the e-assist mild hybrid system is no longer available in the United States. Now, if you happen to live in China, then you can get a Buick LaCrosse with a new 1.8 liter full hybrid system, but that system is not available in the US at this time. Power figures for this engine come in at 310 horsepower and 282 pound-feet of torque, making this the most powerful V6 in this particular category. This engine is mated to a brand new eight-speed automatic transmission from Ison. So interestingly enough, this is actually the same basic eight-speed automatic transmission that we find in certain Lexus models. Thanks to the cylinder deactivation, the direct injection, and the brand new eight-speed automatic transmission, fuel economy has made a significant improvement over last year. You'll get 23 miles per gallon if you get the all-wheel drive version and 25 if you drive the front-wheel drive version, which is the one that we're testing right here. An interesting touch with this all-wheel drive system is that it is a torque vectoring all-wheel drive system, which is not something that you generally find in this price range. As I've said in previous videos, it's very important to remember that the 2017 EPA test cycle changed, and this vehicle is rated on the brand new test cycle, so you cannot directly compare this vehicle's 25 mile per gallon score to a 2016 or earlier 25 mile per gallon score. Front seat comfort is excellent in the LaCrosse. Even base models get a 10-way power seat with a two-way adjustable lumbar support. We're driving the top end trim, so we do have a two-position seat memory, a power tilt telescopic steering column with a large range of motion that's also memory linked, and we have the four-way adjustable lumbar support and the optional massage feature. As we see with the massaging systems in luxury vehicles, this seat uses air bladders and it inflates them and deflates them to give you that massaging effect. Now these air bladders do not inflate or deflate quite as much or quite as rapidly as the massaging features that we find in your average luxury vehicle like a BMW, Mercedes, or an Audi. However, the LaCrosse is one of the very few vehicles on the market in this price range that has a seat with this function. 
Rear seat comfort is good in the lacrosse, but it does drop one point versus the last generation lacrosse that we tested. I have an excellent amount of legroom sitting right here behind myself, about five to six inches of available legroom left. However, if I sit upright in this rear seat, my head is touching the ceiling. A spacious rear passenger compartment has long been a hallmark of a full-size American sedan. However, the sexy side profile that we see in the 2017 LaCrosse does cut down on that headroom versus the previous generation. It's really noticeable if I move over here to the middle seat, where I do have to crank my head to one side in order to sit upright and have my seat on the backrest. And that's a little bit of a pity, because if I sit all the way over here on the right side of the vehicle, this front seat is all the way back in its tracks, suitable for a six foot five passenger that I had in the car, and I still have about four inches of legroom left. Not every full-size sedan offers a folding rear seat back, but the LaCrosse still does. It's a 60-40 design right there. We do have a center armrest that folds down with a storage cubby and two large cup holders as well. You should keep in mind there is no ski pass-through right in the middle, so you would have to fold the 60% side down if you wanted to put long items in the vehicle. Although the LaCrosse has gotten a little bit longer for 2016 and the trunk has become a little bit larger, it is still on the small side for this category. At 15 cubic feet, you will find about one cubic foot more in the average entry in this segment, and something like a Ford Taurus can actually hold 20 cubic feet of cargo. However, we still were able to fit five of these 24-inch roller bags in the trunk. We had to put two right like this. Then you can actually put two in that position, one there right behind each other. And that's because the trunk has become a little bit squarer overall than it was in the past. They've also made it a little bit wider. You can actually put wide items from each side to the other because they've pushed the inside of the trunk as close to the sheet metal as possible. Buick says they've done this to make carrying golf bags just a little bit easier. Now on the downside, we don't have a full-size spare tire under the load floor. Hopping into the trunk, this vehicle scores 8 out of 10 points in our exclusive trunk comfort index. We do lose a few points because of the overall size of this trunk versus the competition, and we also lose some points because we don't find a full-size spare tire under the cargo area load floor. It's just a donut tire. We do have a handy helper handle to help you close the trunk lid, however. On the inside of the LaCrosse, one of the big changes is this new panoramic moonroof. Now, it doesn't go quite as far back as some panoramic roofs, You'll notice it ends right there above the rear passenger's knees. However, it is definitely larger than what we saw before and larger than what we see in most of the competition. We have height adjustable seat belts for both the driver and the front passenger and two-way adjustable headrests. Since we're driving the top end trim, the front seats are heated and ventilated. The front door panels are composed out of a majority of soft touch plastics. We have the soft touch injection molded upper that has been after stitched. We have a soft touch armrest and soft touch inserts. However, you will find hard plastics lower on the door, like right here by the storage cubby. The upper portion of the dashboard is injection molded and then after stitched to give it the impression of being multiple pieces of material that have been completely stitched together. Basically what goes on is that this entire design with this ridge that runs through it is injection molded and then they run a sewing machine across the top of it to give it real stitches and give it this appearance of multiple pieces of material. Below the stitched panel we find a fairly small glove compartment. I wasn't able to fit a tablet computer inside. In the center of the dashboard, our model has a center channel speaker because we do have the up-level Bose audio system. Moving down from that, we find a standard touchscreen infotainment system that supports Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. This is standard in all lacrosse models, regardless of the trim level. This essentially means that all models come standard with navigation, although you can get the factory navigation software like our model has. Below the infotainment screen, we have a few physical buttons, home, track backward and forward, volume and power, and then a back button. Then we have a two-zone automatic climate control system. Our model has the heated and ventilated seats, as I said earlier. Below that, we have a few additional buttons. The sport button controls the way the engine and transmission behave and the way the suspension behaves because we do have the adaptive suspension in this model. Working our way down from there, we have two large cup holders on the right side of the shifter. The shifter itself is an all-new design. This operates very much like the BMW shifters that we see in most modern BMW models. It's a joystick style that always returns to center. If you want to shift the vehicle, you actually press a button right over here on the left side of the shifter, and then we pull it down for drive. You pull it again for the manual mode. You'll notice that light changed right there. If you want neutral, we press it up. We go into neutral right like that. If you want reverse, we press that button, and then we actually push the shifter up and then over to the left, and that engages reverse. It again returns right there to center. If you want to park the car, we simply hit the P button right there, or you can actually turn the car off with the keyless go button right up here, and then the car will automatically park itself. 
Obviously, one of the reasons Buick used this new shifter design was style, but the other reason is practicality because we now have the storage cubby right here under the center console. There's a 12 volt power outlet and you can easily put things like smartphones or small purses right there. Continuing our way back from there, we have a slot which is just a little bit too small to put my iPhone 7 Plus in there, but if you did have a narrower smartphone, you could actually put it in there and keep it out of the way. Between the front seats, we have a padded armrest. This opens to reveal a moderately sized storage compartment. We have two USB inputs and one auxiliary input. You can easily put wallets, that sort of thing, right there inside. On the driver's side, we have a partial LCD instrument cluster. So the tachometer over here on the left is a physical gauge, as are the fuel gauge and the engine temperature gauge right over here on the right. The battery voltage gauge that we see to the left of the fuel level and the engine oil temperature gauge that we see over here on the left side of your screen are actually being generated by the LCD. And of course, the entire center of the display is that LCD as well. The LCD instrument cluster functions very similarly to other General Motors models. This is where you'll find your trip computer information, tire pressure monitoring, the status of the radar cruise control, safety systems, etc. The steering wheel is a four spoke design with sport grips right up top and paddle shifters behind these two large spokes on either side. We have down on the left and up right over here on the right. The left side of the steering wheel is where we find the buttons for the radar adaptive cruise control system, speed increase, decrease, we have cancel, system enable, disable, distance right up here, heated steering wheel button right down there with a status light to the left of that. We also find the phone hang up and mute button and the voice command button. On the right side of the steering wheel, we have track forward, backward. We have a four-way joystick button that controls that multifunction instrument cluster. Okay, right there in the center. And then we have volume up, down, over here on the far right. The first thing you'll notice out on the road is how much faster the LaCrosse is versus the last generation model. We ran from zero to 60 in six and a half seconds. And this doesn't really produce that much more power than the 2015 model. The way Buick got here was they replaced the six-speed automatic transmission with an all-new eight-speed automatic transmission that gives us a lower first gear and a taller final gear to not only improve acceleration, but also highway fuel economy. The other thing Buick did was they put the LaCrosse on a diet. In fact, the front-wheel drive model that we're driving here is only 3,600 pounds, and there are several mid-size sedans that are a full foot shorter than this that are actually heavier. Adding all-wheel drive, of course, increases the weight of the LaCrosse, but even when you equip this vehicle with all-wheel drive, it's still going to be under 4,000 pounds. This is significantly lighter than something like a Chrysler 300. The light curb weight definitely pays dividends, not just with the acceleration time, but also with the braking distance and the handling scores. We ran from 60 miles an hour back to zero in 113 feet, which is definitely short for this segment. Keep in mind, we are again driving the front wheel drive model, which is a little bit lighter than the all wheel drive version. And we are driving the top end version with the widest tires available. However, even if you were to get the base front wheel drive model, you'd still stop shorter than the average entry in this segment, thanks to the light curb weight. General Motors has a long history of creating excellent driving front wheel drive vehicles and the LaCrosse is no different. The model we're driving has the optional hyper strut suspension. There are actually three different suspensions available. There's the base suspension, which is a traditional McPherson strut up front. Then we have the all wheel drive version, which uses a very slightly tweaked suspension design. And then we have the top end front wheel drive models like we're driving right here. And this uses what's called the hyper strut. The hyper strut and Ford's Revo knuckle are very similar to one another. You can do some online research on your own to see exactly how they compare with your average McPherson strut. In essence, the design trades a little bit of road feel for improved handling. The improved handling affects not just the way the vehicle turns into corners, the amount of grip that we get in the corners, but it also has an effect of reducing torque steer in these vehicles. So even though we have 310 horsepower under the hood and this is still a two wheel drive vehicle, we don't really have a lot of torque steer, even if you floor this in a corner. Thanks to the light curb weight and the excellently designed suspension, the LaCrosse is one of the best handling entries in this segment. I would say this beats the Avalon, it also beats the Lexus ES300 and the Kia Cadenza by a very slight hair. The brand new Cadenza is an excellent handling vehicle as well. However, the Chrysler 300's overall dynamics are superior to this vehicle. Now, comparably equipped with comparable tires on them, this will actually hold the road a little bit better than the 300 because of the light curb weight, but it's not gonna have that strong rear wheel drive dynamic that we do find in the Chrysler. Of course, getting that rear wheel drive dynamic in the Chrysler has a few other compromises because we don't have the same kind of interior room in the Chrysler that you do find in the Buick. Out on a gravel road like this, it's obvious that for the 2017 LaCrosse, Buick decided to make this vehicle a little bit firmer than the previous generation. We are driving the model, of course, with the 20 inch wheel package and the dynamic adjustable suspension. 
If you get the base lacrosse, then it is a little bit softer and a little bit more comfortable out on rough roads or out on the highway. Now this suspension does have the option of two different drive modes. We have touring mode and we have sport mode. Sport mode is definitely firmer than the other and both of those modes are firmer than your traditional Buick. Over the last few years, Buick has definitely been trying to reinvent themselves as a sportier brand, and that's true of the 2017 LaCrosse. This is not the grandmotherly kind of Buick that you may think of from the 1980s. Back out here on paved roads, the firmer suspension that we see in this model is definitely obvious. This doesn't soak up small bumps in the road as well as previous generations of the LaCrosse did. It's all down to the sportier dynamic that we find in this model. Another hallmark of the Buick brand has long been cabin quietness, and that is true for the 2017 LaCrosse as well. In our cabin noise test at 50 miles an hour, we scored 70 decibels, making this one of the quietest entries in this segment. Of course, pretty much everybody has been stepping up their game in terms of interior refinement, and you will now find similarly quiet cabins in some of the competition, but this is notably more quiet than the Lexus ES350 or the Toyota Avalon. When it comes to fuel economy, this is definitely not your grandmother's Buick. We've been averaging 26 miles per gallon over a week of very mixed driving, even though this does have again a 310 horsepower V6 engine under the hood. This is easily the most efficient naturally aspirated V6 entry that we have tested in this segment. This beats the Toyota Avalon and the Lexus ES350 by a small margin. It beats the brand new Kia Cadenza and its 8-speed automatic transmission by about 2 miles per gallon, and it beats the Chrysler 300 by several miles per gallon because it's fairly heavy. The light curb weight definitely has an impact on my driving cycle because I do live in a hilly area and I have to climb up and over a 2200 foot mountain pass twice a day. And that normally drops a lot of vehicles just a little bit below their EPA average. And this has actually been going just a little bit above the EPA average. In steady state highway travel, it's fairly easy to get over 30 miles per gallon out of this vehicle. And that's very impressive for a full size American sedan. Overall, the LaCrosse is one of the best rounded models available in the full size sedan segment. Everything about the driving dynamics of this vehicle are very well sorted. We don't have the same kind of compromises that you do find in some of the competition. The Chrysler 300, for instance, has an excellent driving dynamic with that rear wheel drive layout, but the overall weight of the vehicle has a severe impact, not just on the acceleration, but also on the handling and the fuel economy. For 2017, the Encore starts at $32,065 for the base model. Somewhat similar to what we're seeing in the Buick Encore, the base trim of the LaCrosse has somewhat limited colors on the inside and on the outside, and essentially no options. It does, however, come very well equipped with standard HID headlamps, the standard power front passenger and driver seat, fog lamps, the 8-inch infotainment system with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, active noise cancellation, and the two-zone climate control system. You should know that leather is not standard in the LaCrosse, it actually starts with leatherette, very much like we see in European luxury sedans. As with the Buick Encore, if you want to add options to your LaCrosse, you have to step up into the preferred trim, which is $36,065. And you'll notice, although it does add a few features, it doesn't add as many as you might think for that price jump. Basically, part of what you're paying for by going from the base trim up to the preferred trim is the ability to add those options and expand the color palette. If you want leather upholstery, you'll have to jump up to the Essence trim at $38,665 in order to get it. And if you want all-wheel drive, you have to jump all the way up to the top-end premium trim, which starts at $41,065 and ends at $50,370 if you select all of the option boxes and the all-wheel drive system. Now keep in mind that in this video, we have been driving the premium version of the LaCrosse. And that means the model we were driving did have the hyper-strut suspension which is different than the other trims. Only the premium trim gets the hyper strut suspension, and as I said, it is actually removed when you add the all-wheel drive system. With a price range of around $32,000 to around $50,000, there's a great deal of overlap between the LaCrosse and certain mid-size stands like a Ford Fusion, for instance. If you were to add all of the options, you could definitely be up into the price range of the Buick LaCrosse, as well as a few luxury sedans that get more expensive than this. So you could see, in a way, the LaCrosse as an alternative to something like a BMW 3 Series in base form or a Mercedes-Benz CLA in mid-range trim. However, as usual, we're going to keep our comparisons very focused on full-size sedans and full-size sedans with price ranges that are roughly similar to the Buick LaCrosse. The first and most obvious competitor is the Chrysler 300 and, of course, the Dodge Charger. Now, in theory, the Dodge Charger competes more with the Chevy SS and the Chevy Impala than the Buick LaCrosse, so we'll be talking primarily about the Chrysler 300. The Chrysler 300 sells very well in the U.S., and it is the only classic rear-wheel drive American sedan left. 
In terms of pricing, the 300 covers a very similar range to the Buick LaCrosse. It starts at $32,340 and tops out at $49,355. If you want the V8, that will set you back at least $37,770. And interestingly enough, if you want all-wheel drive, you no longer get that with the V8. You do have to get the V6 in the 300. Although the 300 has been around for a while, Chrysler has done their best to refresh it on a relatively regular basis to try and keep it a little bit more current. But the basics of the vehicle are getting just a little bit old. It's not obvious in the driving dynamics because the 300 is an excellent vehicle in terms of handling ability and handling feel. It again is also the only rear wheel drive entry in this particular segment. However, the age of the Chrysler 300 does start to show in the overall packaging of the vehicle and the vehicle's weight. The Chrysler 300 is not light like the Buick LaCrosse is. That's really obvious when we start taking a look at fuel economy figures and acceleration in the V6 model. The V6 Chrysler 300 has about as much power as the LaCrosse and it also has an 8-speed automatic transmission, but it is notably slower than the Buick because of the curb weight. The V8 Chrysler 300 is, of course, considerably faster than the Buick LaCrosse, but because of the added weight of the V8 engine and, of course, the fact that it's a 5.7 liter V8, the fuel economy is definitely below what we see in the Buick. In an interesting twist, the 300 ends up being a slightly better buy than the Buick LaCrosse. You can get things like real wood trim. It has, again, those rear-wheel drive dynamics, and it has an interior that you can get a few more luxury doodads in than you can get in the LaCrosse, like the full leather dashboard and the full leather doors. That top-end $49,355 price in the Chrysler 300 does include the 5.7-liter Hemi V8 and the excellent performance that we get as a result. However, again, it does not include all-wheel drive like we do find in the Buick LaCrosse for its $50,000 top-end price. Although the Lexus ES starts higher than the Buick at $38,900, it ends up right around the same price, just around that $50,000 price point. Keep in mind we are talking about the regular gasoline version of the Lexus ES, not the available hybrid version. The available hybrid version is a very interesting entry in this segment because Buick no longer offers that in the U.S., leaving the only model, the Lexus. Lexus obviously has a well-deserved reputation for impeccable reliability and impeccable fit and finish. The interior in the Lexus ES is in need of an update in my mind, although we do find luxury touches like real wood trim and some other high-end finishes in the cabin, we also find plastics that I personally find to be a step behind the Toyota Avalon. There are also features available in the LaCrosse that we just don't find in the Lexus at any price. You won't find all-wheel drive, you won't find Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, and the performance is better out of the Buick LaCrosse than the Lexus. Interestingly enough, the Buick LaCrosse uses an ISIN 8-speed automatic transmission, which is the same transmission that Lexus uses in the RX350, but that transmission has not made it into the ES350 yet. The result is that the older 6-speed automatic in the Lexus ES and the reduced power output we find from its 3.5-liter V6 gives it definitely lower performance than we find in the LaCrosse. The LaCrosse also handles better, especially if we take a look at the top-end trim with the hyper-strut suspension or the all-wheel drive version with the torque vectoring rear axle. For 2017, Kia released an all-new Cadenza. The previous generation Cadenza was an excellent value in this segment, and that really continues with the new 2017 model. It starts out just about the same price as the LaCrosse at $31,990, but it ends less expensive than the LaCrosse at $45,290. Although the top-end price of the Kia Cadenza is a little bit more expensive than the premium trim of the Buick LaCrosse, we actually have about the same kind of feature content as we find in a fully loaded front-wheel drive Buick LaCrosse. And the Buick LaCrosse is going to be a little bit more expensive. It also won't have as long of a warranty as we find in the Kia. Kia does not offer all-wheel drive in the Cadenza, so there is no direct corollary to the absolutely fully loaded version of the LaCrosse that does have that particular option. In addition, the handling in the Cadenza is a little bit more similar to the Essence trim of the LaCrosse and lower because it doesn't have the hyper-strut suspension that we do find in the top-end trim of the LaCrosse. The Cadenza is one of the few entries in the segment that uses an 8-speed automatic transmission. It's an all-new Hyundai and Kia model, and it actually shifts smoother than the 8-speed that we find in the Buick LaCrosse. I think it's very comparable to what we see out of the Lexus portfolio. Although the Cadenza's engine is a little bit smaller, performance is fairly close to the front-wheel drive versions of the LaCrosse because the Cadenza is fairly light as well in this particular segment. Although the Cadenza is light and it uses an 8-speed automatic, fuel economy is lower than the Buick LaCrosse. Fuel economy is something that Kia has struggled with over time, but the vehicle overall is a decent discount over the LaCrosse, and you could buy a decent amount of gasoline for the two dollars to $3,000 of price difference that we find between the Buick and the Kia. 
Also keep in mind that Kia also offers one of the longest warranties in the United States, especially the powertrain warranty, which is a 10-year, 100,000-mile warranty that's definitely longer than we find on the Buick. In terms of overall styling, I actually think the Cadenza is slightly more attractive than the Buick inside and out as well. Let me know what you think about that down there in the comment section below. Next up, we have the Nissan Maxima. The Maxima is something of a tweener in terms of overall size, slotting somewhere between the average full-size sedan and the average mid-size sedan, but it does sell very well in this segment, and most of you on Facebook wanted me to compare that to the LaCrosse, so that's why we're covering it instead of the other vehicles that we could be comparing. The price range of the Maxima is definitely within the range of the Buick LaCrosse. It starts at $36,610, which is definitely a step up from the average mid-size sedan, and it ends at $41,335. That actually means that the Maxima has one of the narrowest price ranges in this segment. That's a little bit unusual for a premium full-size sedan in America. Part of the reason for that is that we don't find all of the same options and gadgets and gizmos available in the Maxima that we do find in some of the competition. The Maxim is perhaps one of the most stylized entries in this particular segment. I think as a result, it has more of a personality than we find in the Buick or the Lexus or the Chrysler or the Kia Cadenza. On the downside, the Maxima really is no longer the four-door sports car that it was when it first launched in the U.S. It has a CVT under the hood, and it has a 3.5-liter V6 that's really very similar to what we find in the 3.5-liter V6 Nissan Altima. Because the Maxima is a little bit bigger, the Nissan Altima V6 is actually a little bit faster 0 to 60 as well. The LaCrosse is unquestionably a strong contender in this segment. It's one of the very few vehicles that offers all-wheel drive. It's really the only vehicle that offers a torque vectoring rear axle. Although the LaCrosse offers that torque vectoring feature, it's not trying to be a Ford Taurus SHO. It's not trying to be a high-performance entry in this segment. And again, performance is still better in the V8 version of the Chrysler 300. Instead, the LaCrosse lands somewhere between. It's not trying to be Lexus soft, but it's not trying to be rock hard either. The adaptive suspension that we had in our model definitely makes it comfortable for driving out on the open highway, but on rougher roads, it's definitely going to be firmer than something like a Cadenza or the Lexus ES. My top pick in this segment is the brand new 2017 Kia Cadenza. It's an absolutely excellent value, and I love the way the vehicle looks inside and outside and the way that the vehicle is priced and packaged. My close runner-up is the 2017 Buick LaCrosse, but there are a few caveats here. Because if you're looking for better handling, or you're looking for all-wheel drive, or you're looking for better fuel economy, then the LaCrosse would actually be the winner in this segment over the Kia Cadenza. For me, I'm looking at the overall package with a definite nod towards value, and that's why, for me, the Cadenza edges out the Buick LaCrosse by just a hair. But again, there are some definite reasons that you might put the Buick LaCrosse just one notch above the Kia Cadenza. Either way, I would take the Buick LaCrosse over the Lexus ES or the Nissan Maxima or a variety of other vehicles in this particular segment. And I would say, unless you are looking at the V8 version of the Chrysler 300, I would take the Buick LaCrosse over the Chrysler as well. Thanks for taking the time to check out this video. Again, I'm Alex Dykes. Be sure and check out those related videos on the side of your screen. Hit that subscribe button down there if you have not already done so. Remember that subscribing helps us get access to new cars. You can also find us over at facebook.com slash alexandautos and over at patreon.com if you want to help support this channel. I'll see you next week.